Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to take a look at propofol. Many of these videos in the pharmacology section will focus on a single drug used in the practice of anesthesia, its mechanism of action, major side effects, things about them to take into consideration, how and why they're used, and some high yield details and clever ways to remember them. Think of this screen when we're done as your propofol cheat sheet. So let's get started with the most notable of all the anesthetic drugs we use, the milk of amnesia, as some call it, propofol. So the drug type, this is an alkyl phenol. That's the drug group and drug type. And it's a sedative or a hypnotic that puts patients to sleep. Now, something to note, and I'm just going to write down here in our miscellaneous section, is that propofol itself is insoluble in aqueous solutions, which means it has to be prepared in an emulsion or with fat. And to do this, they mix the components with that of egg yolk. So I'm just going to write egg yolk here. And I'm sure many have heard about it. Uh, and it's perpetuated the idea that you shouldn't use it in patients with egg allergies. So it's the clinician's preference, but most people with egg allergies actually have allergies to the egg whites, not the egg yolk. And therefore, propofol is still safe to use in them. That being said, many practitioners still feel more comfortable not using it given the option. Now, it's also of note that because it's made in this fat emulsion, it's a pretty good medium for bacterial growth. Bacterial growth. So it's important to do your best to use sterile technique when drawing it up and using it, but it's also why it should be used within six hours of actually opening it. So let's move on to the mechanism of action, uh, as well as the drug's effects on various organ systems. So first, the mechanism of action is thought to be via GABA. And hopefully, as everyone watching this remembers, and if you don't, GABA is an inhibitory signal in our central nervous system. And specifically, what this does is it increases the time that the GABA channel is open, the chloride channel, rather, um, is open when it's stimulated. As I just mentioned, we know that GABA is inhibitory and it therefore will put patients to sleep. To help you remember this, remember, and we're going to talk about it with other drugs as well, that alcohol, something that many of us have experienced with to some degree in the real world, also acts on GABA. And so the way I think about it is that propofol basically makes you instantly blackout drunk. So now is also a good time to mention the dosing and duration of action. And typically in normal adult, adults, patients are dosed at... 1.5 to 2.5 milligrams per kilogram for your induction dose. But this goes up in children, almost all the way up to four or five, and it goes down in the elderly. But generally the sweet spot is the 1.5 to 2.5 mg per kg. And then with that, the duration of action from a single bolus is usually about five to eight minutes. Now for the metabolism. So the metabolism is done by the liver. So I'm going to do my best to draw a little liver here. Oh, I drew it backwards. Let me go ahead and fix that. But it's a it's metabolized by the liver and then subsequently excreted by the kidneys. Now, there is an interesting fact to note is that the clearance rate is actually higher than the blood flow through the liver. And what this means is that there are other sites then of metabolism, uh, one of which is postulated to be the lungs. So what's also important to note is that the termination of action of the drug, despite its high clearance, is the fact that it redistributes from the brain and the blood into the skeletal muscles, a concept that we're going to discuss in our video of the three compartment model. So even though it clears very quickly, really the termination of action is a function of whatever is in the blood that circulates to the brain, then leaving the brain, going back to the blood and into skeletal muscle and fat tissue. All right, so on to systems. First, the cardiovascular system. Propofol's major effect here is that it significantly drops the patient's blood pressure. And this is secondary to vasodilation, both arterially 
sorry, dilation, both arteriorally, arterial, sorry, I have a hard time saying that, and through the venous system. What this means is that, sorry, I was laughing when I realized I couldn't say that word. So, sorry, it decreases blood pressure by vasodilation of the arterial and venous systems, meaning that it helps afterload, but it also reduces preload to the heart. Now, of note here, remember that propofol is unique in that not only does it vasodilate, we would expect there to be an increase in heart rate since cardiac output is equal to heart rate and stroke volume. And since we're decreasing our stroke volume by decreasing our preload, we would have an reflexive tachycardia as a result of the baroreceptor reflex to increase our heart rate. But in reality, this doesn't occur and there is no compensation. So there is no change in heart rate as we would expect. And this uh, it kind of directly depresses the heart and that can actually worsen hypotension. So those are really the major two points for the cardiovascular effects of propofol. Next, we'll take a look at the central nervous system where we know that propofol is a hypnotic, so it puts our patients to sleep. And remember that though it puts you to sleep, it doesn't fix pain. There is no analgesic component. And that's important to know because you're going to have to supplement the patient with surgery with analgesic medications. As we said, it acts on GABA, which we know is a central nervous system depressant and puts you to sleep the same way alcohol would. Also importantly is that it decreases both your cerebral oxygen demand, decreases your CMRO2 or your demand of oxygen by your brain because it kind of turns your brain off, but it also decreases blood flow because you vasodilate. But David, didn't you say that it vasodilates? Doesn't vasodilating vessels in our brain increase cerebral flow and increase ICP? Well, that is absolutely true. This is counteracted by the effects of the peripheral vasodilation. The vasodilation and subsequent pooling of blood peripherally actually decreases the overall blood flow to the brain. This is referred to as coupling, when there's a similar decrease in cerebral oxygen demand and supply. So there's coupled or matched as opposed to decoupling, which we'll see in other talks. Note though that this can decrease your cerebral perfusion pressure leading to ischemia to the brain as well. Third, we're gonna talk about the respiratory system. Many may know or have seen in the LR firsthand that large bolus do doses of propofol can lead to apnea, making it a respiratory depressant. Secondly, propofol blunts the effects of hypoxia and hypercarbia, so blunts hypercarbic and hypoxic reaction. And what this means, and it'll come up in a number of drugs, is that normally when your body senses either low oxygen levels or high CO2 levels, its normal response is to ramp up its minute ventilation, breathe faster, deeper, to either blow off the CO2 or increase the amount of oxygen taken in. Propofol blunts this response, maintaining the patient's breathing pattern as is if you don't give enough to make them apneic. The last two parts of the respiratory effects are that it decreases airway reflexes, like bronchospasm, which is important during laryngoscopy, and that it causes bronchial relaxation. Now, the last take-home point, we're going to add it back down to miscellaneous over here, is that propofol is actually anti-emetic and can help patients with post-operative nausea and vomiting. Propofol is commonly seen as our primary induction agent for putting patients to sleep in the operating room, but it can also be used as part of TIVA, which is total intravenous anesthesia, or as a way of producing sedation in the ICU at low doses, or in MAC cases, where it's just monitored anesthesia care, such so as colonoscopies. So that's all for the basics of propofol. As always, if you have any questions or concerns or interested in getting involved, please feel free to write in. Check us out on Instagram at countbackwardsfrom10 and subscribe below. Otherwise, stay tuned for the next video.